The stretch of history between 6000 and 5000 BC is often treated as a quiet bridge between the invention of farming and the rise of the first cities. But in reality, this period was anything but dull. It was a time of radical change, experimentation and creativity in human societies. Across multiple continents, people were trying entirely new ways of thinking, building and organising life. These weren't just incremental improvements, they were fresh ideas that never existed before. From astronomical observations in the Sahara to the first attempts at metal smelting in Europe, and from proto-writing symbols to medical drilling of teeth, humans in this era were innovating in ways that would ripple forward for thousands of years. This video explores the most distinctive and groundbreaking events from that transformative millennium. In the valleys and hills of modern day Serbia, an extraordinary cultural development began around 5500 BC with the Vinca culture. These people were among the earliest in the world to discover how to extract metal from stone, an innovation that would eventually reshape all of human society. At the site of Plasnik, Archaeologists uncovered a set of clay furnaces capable of reaching the high temperatures required to smelt copper ore. The furnaces were cleverly designed with airflow systems, and nearby slag and crucibles suggest that actual copper tools were being produced, not just hammered cold from native metal, but melted, shaped and refined. This leap into metallurgy was not borrowed from older traditions. It originated in southeastern Europe during this exact time. The people of the Vinca culture also lived in organised settlements, some with thousands of people, complete with streets, kilns, storage buildings and communal spaces. Their towns represented some of the largest and most advanced Neolithic communities of the time. But perhaps most intriguing is their use of symbols etched into pottery and figurines, often referred to as Vinca script. While not true writing, these marks showed signs of repetition, pattern and context, suggesting that it may have been used to record ownership, identity or even early religious ideas. These symbols did not evolve from earlier systems. They began within this period, showing that even without cities or states, people were already experimenting with abstract communication. In the coastal region of Brittany, France, a massive stone structure known as the Barnanez Cairn was built around 4800 BC, making it the oldest known megalithic monument in the world. This vast burial complex was constructed from over 13,000 tons of stone and contains 11 chamber tombs, all enclosed under a mound more than 70 metres long. At a time when most people still lived in small scattered villages, the construction of such a monument required coordinated labour, engineering knowledge and strong social cohesion. What's most fascinating is why it was built. These chamber tombs were not just graves, they were likely spiritual centres used for generations. The effort to gather, shape and place the massive stones would have taken months or years, possibly serving as a unifying project for early communities. Such a massive construction effort points to the presence of ritual specialists labour divisions and perhaps even early forms of leadership or hierarchy. Yet all of it happened before writing, before metal tools were widely used and before traditional rise of states. Barnanez reminds us that monumentality and spiritual architecture didn't begin in Egypt or Mesopotamia, but in small Neolithic communities that decided to honour the dead and the sacred in stone. 
In the upland valleys of northern Mesopotamia, the Halaf culture emerged around 6000 BC, bringing with it a wave of colourful, finely made ceramics. Unlike earlier pots that were purely functional, Halaf pottery was elaborately decorated with swirling patterns, stylized animals and geometric shapes painted in red, black and cream colours. These ceramics were often found in domestic or ritual contexts, indicating they may have played a role in social identity or communal ceremonies. Their craftsmanship required not only advanced firing techniques, but also a sense of aesthetic and symbolic meaning. These decorated vessels weren't isolated artworks. Across the ancient Near East, they were part of a growing trend towards self-expression and symbolic thinking. At the same time, in southeastern Europe, the Vinci people created pottery with incised signs and symbols. Some vessels even combined image and symbol, suggesting an early effort to encode meaning or communicate shared knowledge. These expressions of art and symbolism show that people during this millennium were not simply surviving or farming. They were beginning to tell stories and express values visually, using pottery as a cultural language long before written text existed. In the middle of what is now the Sahara Desert, a remarkable site called Nabta Playa offers evidence of one of the earliest known astronomical monuments in the world. Located in southern Egypt, this area was not desert 7,000 years ago. It was a savanna-like environment dotted with seasonal lakes supporting a population of nomadic herders. Around 5,500 BC, these communities began gathering at Nabta Playa to erect large megalithic structures including stone circles and alignments that point towards the summer solstice sunrise. Unlike later civilizations in the Nile Valley, the people of Nabta were not urban or agricultural in the traditional sense. They moved with their herds and likely gathered at the site during certain seasons, possibly for rituals, trade or astronomical observations. The stones they placed were carefully arranged not randomly dropped. Some researchers believe these alignments served as a kind of calendar, helping the community track the changing seasons and possibly predict rainfall patterns. The site also includes burials with grave goods and underground water wells, showing not only spiritual and scientific awareness but also engineering skills and social cooperation. These achievements were not entirely original to that period and show that humans were already developing cosmic awareness, ceremonial life and monument building traditions long before pharaohs or pyramids existed. Among the dry plains of Baluchistan in western Pakistan, the site of Mergar holds one of the most surprising discoveries of early human medicine. Around 5500 BC, people living in the settlement were practicing basic dental surgery. In human remains from this period, archaeologists found several teeth that had been drilled with remarkable precision using tiny flint tools. The holes are small, round and deep, and in some cases the teeth even showed signs of healing, meaning the individuals survived the procedure. This practice, which predates Egyptian or Greek medicine by thousands of years, shows not just technical ability, but medical intention. These weren't accidents, they were deliberate treatments for tooth pain or infection. This also suggests that some members of society may have had specialised roles, such as healers or technicians, and that they had already had the concept of bodily care and intervention. Mergar is also notable for other developments, including the use of semi-precious stones, shell ornaments and early trade networks. But it is this evidence of surgery that stands out, an extraordinary example of how humans were already probing the limits of health and healing 6,000 years ago. 
In the highlands of what is now southeastern Algeria, the vast area known as Tassili Inadjur became a canvas for one of the world's earliest and most dramatic artistic traditions. Around 5500 BC, during a time when the Sahara was lush with vegetation, lakes and wildlife, people painted the rock walls of over 15,000 shelters and cliffs with stunning lifelike scenes of daily life, ritual and mystery. The paintings depict cattle herding, ceremonial dances, masked figures and stylized animals, often rendered with a level of detail and movement that is rarely seen in early art. Some human figures wear what looks like costumes or ritual gear, leading researchers to believe these paintings captured religious or spiritual events, perhaps ceremonies linked to rain, fertility or ancestor worship. Others show early herding scenes, indicating new relationships between humans and animals as the environment changed. These murals offer a rare glimpse into the cognitive and cultural world of early Saharan peoples. They were not simply recording events, they were constructing meaning, connecting people, land, animals and the divine through monumental visual storytelling, thousands of years before the written word. Around 5000 BC, the Yangshou culture rose along the middle reaches of the Yellow River in northern China. This society built planned villages, with circular or rectangular houses organised around central plazas. The presence of surrounding ditches suggests that people were protecting their communities, either from wild animals or rival groups. These weren't random clusters of huts, they were intentional social spaces, reflecting a new kind of community thinking. What makes the Yangshou culture stand out is its painted pottery, decorated with black and red designs on buff coloured clay. Some of the pots depict stylized fish, faces, birds or abstract lines that may have carried symbolic meanings. A few even contain markings that look like proto-characters suggesting that these communities were beginning to develop systems of symbolic communication. The Yangshou also left behind burial sites, where people were buried with different types of grave goods depending on age, gender and status. This points to the rise of social roles and ceremonial behaviour. The Yangshou weren't simply builders or potters, they were early experimenters in identity, symbolism and community memory. Between 6000 and 5000 BC, human communities around the world were not just learning how to farm, they were reimagining what it was to be human. In every corner of the globe, people were observing the stars, building monuments, experimenting with metal, carving symbols and even drilling teeth. These weren't slow improvements from earlier eras, they were genuine breakthroughs that first appeared during this specific window of time. This period gave us the first astronomers, engineers, artists and healers, not in the cities of later empires but in small villages, desert camps and forested valleys. These peoples set the stage for later civilizations but their creativity and originality deserve recognition on their own. They weren't just preparing for history, they were making it, one invention, one symbol, one stone circle at a time. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.